Hi guys, tada! Yet another CRK TV repair video. This time it's a piece of Soviet electronics by the name of Electron 51TC for dash for 461D, which supports PAL and SECAM systems. Obviously color. Problem. It does weird stuff with this when you press the switches. Because here you can see three switches. I don't know why the hell they did put three of them, but I guess meh, that's because this is actually IR window for a remote. Or the switch probably some, something like a soft switch that puts it in standby so you can turn it on just by remote. This one is, I don't know. Uh, just momentary switch. I don't know what it is for. This one is nice clunky one, probably the power. However, I don't know really why did they put three of them, but let me demonstrate what's wrong with it. I'm going to plug it in. Alright. Alright. And we have this standby LED gone. If we push this. Alright, then we push this second one, it starts up. By the way, CRT is not original in this scene, it's replacement, probably some Samsung CRT or something like that. <coughs> Yet another problem that I discovered, that fella didn't told me about, is this controls being kind of nasty. You can see the free play here. It's ridiculous and it doesn't do much that's uh, intensity you can see it should be black and white in this position but nothing contrast sort of works brightness brightness is the one which has a nice feel about it actually nice and smooth but doesn't make much difference Volume is very, very crusty. It doesn't even try. Oh. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the car off, see what's wrong with these controls which bounce around doing nothing. And actually, as he told me that channels all display the same problem you you tune them to other you switch it and it doesn't actually make difference well because it's this switch panel the, the engineers back at the time called it pseudo sensor panel because it's actually a switch not a sensor but it's a rather soft action switch sort of like a sensor and sometimes when the contact there get oxidized, it, it gives you erratic operation. <coughs> so that's what I think the problem is. is yet another funny thing that I can't turn it off, neither by this button or this button or this button as well. It's still there, you can see. What the hell is that about? That's real weird. Uh, I'll see about wiring this third switch. It's a nice clunky one. As a uh, primary cutoff switch. If it's not wired in the circuit. Already I'm gonna wire it. In such position. Such, po <laughs> such position that in this unpressed state. The TV will ain't gonna get any power. When you press state, it's gonna be getting mains to it. Alright, let me pop the car off and you will see. By the way, backside looks something like this, as you can see. It's not terribly large or anything. What I like about this television, since they it's so easy to service them. 
Well, at least I saw it it's so easy. Huh. Got any two hands here. All right, I found the problem. Originally this, you can see pieces, you can either, you, when in locked position, they look like this, vertical, then you turn it 90 degrees, it doesn't matter in which direction, and then you, you can take off the cover, but apparently this got broken, so they decided to just put a screw there. I see that CRT is relatively new, I guess. What the hell? That's weird, really. No, chassis is not fixed in it by any means. That's really rather bad. Oh boy. Ah, it's falling apart. There we go. Now we are free. Gonna tilt it in such a way that it ain't gonna trap on me. And as you can see, so very very similar to yet another TV that you saw in my another video or <coughs> my not didn't saw in my previous video which is called scavenging parts from an old CRD TV as you can see that layout is pretty much the same we got power supply here we got a bunch of tune RF stuff here color module here horizontal here and vertical right there so far I can see that most of the capacitors are originals because you can see the aluminum cans these guys that's capacitors very dusty here I might take it outside and give it a nice brush yeah and you can see it's locked in position and such then you lift it like that and you can tilt it off like this and get an access to the thing all right and it locks in this position sort of and you can walk on it let me get a flashlight so we will see that magic stuff there all right the top most board there is the board responsible for that funkiness? And yeah, and the board in the middle with bunch of potentiometers on it is what responsible for that erratic uh, is what responsible. For to that erratic operation of the knobs board a uh, very dusty board with a bunch of with a couple of transistors which you can see in the middle of the screen is the board which uh, you can tune the channels on basically it has a uh, eight multi-turn potentiometers which you with help of which you can tune the channel in and it will be stored in sort of a memory because it gets basically the Z potentiometer you set a voltage for the the tune the vector diodes inside this inside the tuner, then you get a bunch of uh, these red switches. So here you can see one to eight. Bunch of red switches which help of which you can choose one of this one of that voltages 
which you can tune with these green knobs and then it it's essentially a multiplexer one output but bunch of inputs you can select which input you send to the director dies in order to watch a particular channel and unlike another tv that i took apart this one actually has a whole standby board sort of which you can see mounted on the side here and actually you can see a little transformer there that's what corresponds responsible for standby power one hell of a beefy relay actually check it out shines and got a four megahertz crystal there a couple of ic's bunch of old capacitors which might be causing trouble and there, that box with a fat cable coming to it is a IR receiver itself. And yeah, the CRT is relatively new. It does have a <coughs> place which you can... where supposed to be the manufacturing date here. But it doesn't. Well, but it's in not in Russian, but in Ukrainian, so it must be post-91. Manufactured post-1991, which is rare, can be considered new. I don't know about the emission on this beast, but as you saw it, it got some emi- What the hell? Well, take a look at that. Right there, a label. Check it out. You can see Philips label. Philips. Hmm. What the hell? That's one label which says that it's a sort of a domestic manufactured tube, but right there you can see that it's imported tube. <coughs> Weirdness all around. <laughs> oh way. Anyway, I'm gonna search for problems, for problematic caps. I'm gonna check what's causing that erratic behavior on these potentiometers. They're probably very dead by now. <clears throat> the volume one is not even fixed in place properly, because... <sighs> Let's leftmost potentiometer and check this see how it wobbles so does the uh, brightness contrast and intensity but the volume wobbles the most ah, anyway let me give it a nice cleaning discharge the CRT because some pecky peasants really Allowed to cry about it if I did if I don't show it. I do discharge CRTs all the time, but sometimes I just forget to show it. That's a deal. Anyway, let's get let me get rid of this horrible dust. Oof, residue. That's pathetic. Huge amount of dust. My god. I guess it was sitting in some sort of shed for years. Yeah. And YouTuber by the username of asked me how do I clean the TV. That's how. Just take it outside and give it a nice brush. Works like works like charm. And it gets rid of most of the dust. Not fully, but it sure helps. Well, guys, I found the problem why the third switch didn't do anything. This one. Uh, because... Maybe you can see it. Oh, it's hard to film here. Because it connected to nothing. 
check it out, it's floating in the breeze. So I'm gonna wire it, as I mentioned, to break the connection when it's unpressed, depressed, and on, off, like that. I did clean the boards a little bit and did find a bit of flux residue there, there, so a few caps have been, has been changed on the vertical board, but I don't see any changes on the power supply board, which is rather bad because these boards get most create most failures as always if power supply is bad the rest of the TV won't work as it's supposed to um, now I'm gonna probably go and <coughs> wire the switch properly and also go and fix or replace that potentiometer which wobbles too much oh boy it's quite a lot of hassle actually I won't film anything I'm just gonna show you what I will do and I will show you what I've done in the result because the video will be several hours long it will be very extremely boring for you and extremely annoying for me to film each and every second of it. So the progress so far I installed and wired in the switch as you can see right there the leftmost one. I'm gonna go and now remove this board with potential meters and fix this sloppiness or replace it. If it's that bad I have a couple of similar potential meters out of an, out of an older TV so I can actually use them because they were not, not ne they were not nearly as crusty as these ones. And progress on a channel selector. Here you can see the contacts, how it switches. Bunch. Actually, this is a later model TV. Er earlier model had this board populated with a bunch of transistors. This one has a quite a large IC here. And yeah, I did replace these two capacitors, as you can see, black ones. They both were 22 microfarads, 40 volts. As you can probably see, 22 microfarads, 40 volts, replaced with 22 microfarads, 50 volts. install it oh but first I'm gonna go and fix this because this capacitor looks floppy to me and the traces are lifted <laughs> and yeah they were like that before me so go figure somebody definitely had mucking around had a nice time mucking around with this TV because well the switch was omitted from the circuit why i don't know and actually yet another bad thing that this actually piece white piece of white plastic let me get it out it's supposed to be on the crt itself you can see it's sort of like a spacer or support it's supposed to be like this on it so you can see it supports the pins so they ain't gonna bend that way to the center i'm probably gonna go and put a bit of glue there and glue it in place but first i'm gonna check the CRT pins they seem clean enough but it doesn't hurt to check all right that's later I'm gonna now put this in place and glue the base onto the CRT and uh, fix that sloppiness, at least the volume control, because it, it gets used the most, fix this couple of bad tracks and I'm gonna show you the progress. Cap is soldered.
in as you can see there I couldn't be bothered replacing pads they're screwed so I just went and soldered it in like that it's perfectly fine not aesthetically pleasing but works like charm and uh, yeah I glued the base so right now I'm gonna go and try to power it up and see what how well it will work Whew, so I did put it back together I put the aerial in let's see well it's not very cool I saw a huge flash on the back side it's probably that probably was the fuse yeah the fuse is charred excellent so that switch is faulty actually And these two fuses look completely wasted. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Alright guys, so I'll be honest with you. It was not a switch. It was me who hooked the switch wrong way around. Because I thought that pinout is different. Actually, when the switch is pushed, it closes this and this contacts. As well as this and this two contacts pins shorts them out so you need to put mains for example here and here and your load on the other side but I put mains here so flick boom dead fuses I replace the fuses I wired the switch another switch actually the same one but came from other television in a correct way and hopefully it ain't gonna burst now Alright, it lights up. Cool. Let's put it. Alright. That's weird. It was working before. <clears throat> what the hell is wrong? I did not. Hmm. I did not unhook anything. Fantastic. Let me find the problem. So, since TV. <laughs> refused to walk I took my multimeter and I checked a couple of voltages on the interconnections board and I found that power supply outputting a bit strange voltages instead of 130 volts there was 121 but that's not too bad 12 volts was absent like absolutely so I took power supply out cleaned it checked capacitor slotted with my SR meter and found a completely dry one. It was on a primary side. It is actually. Still this fell. 47 mic. 16 volt. Yeah. Completely dry. And actually found another fault near it. In form of this bad joint. Which you might be able to see this lead is just lives its own life and this resistor was corresponds to this, this lead this resistor is what lives its its life and this resistor is a part of a snubber circuit rc clamp so called because you can see a switch and transistor here a bolt which connects collector that's another side of the bolt it goes here to the capacitor, another lead of the capacitor, and here is that resistor, and here is that capacitor. Gonna go fix that. 
and probably it will work. I'm not sure, but checked all capacitors, they are all good, more or less, ESR wise. But I'm gonna show you how bad that capacitor is. The needle doesn't even move at all. So here is the capacitor. Alright, let's make a connection. You can see needle is right there. Still connected, as you can see. If I'm gonna go and short the probe together, we get a full deflection. So I'm gonna change that and that, change that capacitor, <coughs> fix this joint, put it back together and hopefully it will work this time. And nah, really, I'm gonna put a load on a B plus in form of a light bulb, 60 watt one, across this capacitor, it's a B plus cap, how do I know, because it's a high voltage rated capacitor. You can see there 160 volt, 100 microfarad. I'm gonna put a 60 watt, 230 volt light bulb incandescent right there. Since this power supply, I hate running without load. I'm gonna connect the mains here on this connector for it. This outer pins, because the middle one is not used, I'm gonna align it. I'm gonna find the information what kind of voltages there need to be. And you can adjust <coughs> B plus by means of that trim part. And there is another trim part here which adjusts 12 volt rail. Yeah, there, there was B plus, 130 volts, I guess, 28 volts, and 15 volts, and a 12 volts. 12 volts is not an. Um, is not a separate winding, it's derived from a 15 volts and then it regu gets regulated down with this transistor. So that's that. Alright, so you can see light bulb on the output, right there. A couple of easy hooks I used to hook my multimeter, I'm checking the B plus right now. I tweaked it to 130, you can see light bulb is glowing, using ballast just for the safety sake. And everything is fine. So yeah, and all the voltages are present. I got 15 volts, I got 12.9 volts, I got uh, 130 volts and 28 volts. Whole setup. Everything is nice. Gonna run it for a while. This is for stability issues. Then I'm gonna put it back together and hopefully it will work just fine. More pro problems can easily pop up in other circuits like vertical or horizontal, but that's that will get resolved later. So I put the power supply back, as you can see, and I turned the TV on, and it still did the same. It did nothing but emitted this sort of like sound from the speaker. So I started then unplugging various connectors from this board and <coughs> when I unplug this connector the TV started up, sort of. I heard the horizontal kicking in but I didn't have any image on the screen but at least the power supply didn't stop having trouble so I traced that power connector and it went to this. This board is an audio amplifier and probably it got something faulty on board. Other side looks sort of good but I already found a problem. This capacitor you might be able to see it. It's very floppy and if you can see probably it would be nice if you could see 
that its pin is actually not attached here see it's just there so I'm going to replace that check some other capacitors involved and see will it help or not for me to retrieve sound back what's most interesting is that before I even touched this TV I did get sound I did get picture now I fixed a couple of problems with the switch and potentiometer now it does nothing mm, fantastic that's what you get mucking around with an old gear like that you never know what it will do to you so fellas I changed that capacitor on that bo audio M board right somewhere there you can see heating coffee in the middle of the screen and guess what now the TV starts up will you believe it so this switch then this switch and we get a raster however intensity doesn't seem to do anything contrast does and brightness doesn't do anything so that might be again thanks to some other problems the volume seems to be out of this world as well much this switches I took them out now they don't don't light up all that great and apparently I need to take it out and probably examine and right now with the flashlight you can see that it's an IR receiver indeed because it's a light model Mm, damn it. I don't know. Seems oh, there is some reaction on the screen actually. Let me show you that a second. second channel and the first channel there is some difference I might try to hook an antenna to it but I'll do set of camera I'm gonna tell you what it did in annotation I don't have time it's past midnight already I have to go tomorrow to a city Our I'll have to go in the morning, so I should have a bunch of sleep before that. So that's that probably now. That I'm gonna call this part one. Yeah, that will be good. Part two is coming, of course. But now, guys, I'm gonna leave this installment with a little bit of with a, something a little bit more promising. <laughs> Yes, it's a picture on this antenna, which is screwdriver shout inside the socket. Then I'll get a clip, then it'll be a bunch of animal wire, and sure enough, we got some picture. And we even get a little bit of sound. If you listen close, if you listen carefully, you might hear it. It's very, very. <coughs> small volume but maybe you can hear it all right so now that's what I'm gonna leave you with for part one Thanks for watching, see ya!